Now, I'm not going to lie to you, this one gets a little bit complicated. It's a topic that took me a long time to fully grasp myself, but we're going to tackle it today. We've been looking at different things in Lightroom, right? So things like vibrance versus saturation, texture clarity and dehaze, even white balance. But today, we are going to take a look at highlights and shadows versus whites and blacks. What's the difference between all those sliders? What do they all do? Should you use all of them? Or should, like me, you avoid some of them for years because you just don't fully understand it? No, 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 no. We're gonna end that now. We're gonna dive in. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where we on every Tuesday. We bring you a brand new, fresh, hold on. Oh, that is fresh. A fresh photography tutorial. This week, like I say, let's dive into Lyrum. Enough of the, enough of the fun and games. Let's just get into the tutorial. We're going to look at a couple of different photos because the way that these sliders actually affect your photos can feel very similar, especially in certain circumstances. It can seem like it's extremely similar, but actually there are some big differences and knowing those differences is key to getting the actual result that you want to get. And actually, like I say, it's something I avoided for a long time. To be honest with you, for years, I just didn't use the whites and black sliders really. I would just use highlights and shadows because they're fairly straightforward and it all makes sense. Let's take a look at this photo first of all. This is my dog Nala. I was playing around with the Sigma 50mm f1.2. I've, I've shot this a little too shallow with the old depth of field, but that's that's fine. You know, we, we get it. So with this photo, I've got a mixture of light. It's just natural light coming in from the window over here, falling onto her face there, but this side is a bit dark and for the type of photo it is, it's probably a little bit too contrasty. I'm not going for a moody image. So I want to kind of flatten this out a little bit. And normally what I'd do is I'd come in and I'd go to the shadow slider here and I'd bring that up. And that does absolutely lighten this side of her face. And I might even bring the highlight slider down. And that's going to just bring the actual kind of brighter parts of the image down a little bit in brightness, which is great. That's exactly what I want to happen. But that's not necessarily the end result that I want to go for. And this is a good example of a photo where it's going to look similar, but there are some big differences. And if you can't see it in the photo, you can always look up at the histogram in the top right. That's a really useful way of definitely seeing what differences these different sliders are doing. Let's start with the shadows and the black. So if I bring the shadows all the way up and you can see in the photo, that is light, lighting this darker part of our image. So really what the shadow slider is doing is just brightening or darkening the darker parts of the photo. Fairly straightforward, that makes a lot of sense. And you can see it in the histogram here, if I bring it back down to zero, you can see as I bring it up, it just moves this sort of area, which is the shadows, and even a little bit of the lower end of the midtones up just in terms of their brightness, right? Let's double click to reset. Now the black slider, is going to give a very similar kind of effect. If I move that up on the photo, yes, we're brightening parts of the image, but it is slightly different. If you can't see it so much on here, let me reset that. Let's look at the histogram as I bring that up. So as I bring this up, what we're doing here is something slightly different. Rather than just brightening the darker parts of the image, so the shadows, we're actually moving the black point. So what is the darkest part of this image, which in a lot of photos will be true black, right? What is the darkest pixel? Where is black? Where do we find ourselves? Not in sort of very dark gray and shadows, but where is the darkest black in the image? And we're moving that bottom floor. If we bring that up, we're moving that bottom floor up so that the darkest part of the image is now lighter than it was. So if you look at the histogram, when we're adjusting the shadow slider, we are literally moving the shadows. We're brightening the darker areas of the photo, but we're keeping that lowest point of darkness, which is black. When we adjust the blacks, and you can actually see it when you mouse over the histogram here, it is into different kind of categories. When we adjust the blacks, we are moving that bottom part that deepest black, we're just bringing that up or bringing it down. If we bring that down, you'll see it goes absolutely outrageous. So it ruins the picture to be honest with you, but it, it really deepens where that darkest black is and lowers other parts of the image down to that 
true black, right? And that's blacks all the way down. Let's bring shadows all the way down. And you can see it is quite different, right? It's just affecting, the blacks slider is affecting more of the image than the shadow slider is. Because shadows is just affecting where the shadows are within the histogram. Whereas blacks is moving the whole bottom floor down, which in turn drags other parts down as well. Now that's exactly the same for whites and highlights, just in reverse, right? So if I bring highlights up, it just brightens what are the brighter parts of the image. We've got it here in the histogram. If we double click, we can see that again. It's just gonna bring those up, right? If we bring the whites up, we are moving where the brightest part of the image is. We're moving that to be brighter. So we're pulling that up, which pulls a bunch of the rest of the photo up with it. So with this photo, for example, I would do various different things. I would bring the black slider up because I don't want it to be a moody photo, right? I don't need there to be deep blacks. And then I would similarly bring the shadows up as well because I do want to lighten the darker part of that photo. So by bringing the black slider up like that, I have set where my black point is. So I've lightened that whole bottom part because the black point has come up. And then the shadow slider is just adjusting within that range that I've now set. So the black slider is doing more overall, it's affecting more of the image, and the shadow slider is then affecting within that range that I've now set. I hope that kind of makes sense. So with this photo, because I do want a sort of a, a, a softer, I guess lower contrast feel to it, because it's a, it's a cuter photo, right? She's on the bed, she's got a little toy here, it's very soft light, it's all very nice. I want a soft photo. So I would do something like this, I don't need lots of darkness in there, and I might bring the highlights down, but I actually want to bring the whites up just a little bit to make sure there's nice, lots of room there for kind of brightness going up there. Nice high ceiling for whites. I think that that looks really nice. And what I might do actually, if this was, you know, something I was gonna edit and finish now, is go into the masking and just pop a radial gradient over her face, something like this with a little bit of exposure. Now exposure, of course, is going to brighten every aspect of the photo. It's gonna bring everything up, but that's really gonna help with this side of her face. So I'm gonna do something like that. I might even elongate it a little bit, something like that. And I would actually be really happy with that. We can see before and after. So before, this is where we started. And then after, we've made a big difference, right? But it still feels fairly natural. And you know, maybe we'd increase the texture a little bit. Just get a bit of detail in the fur. Okay, let's look at this on a portrait of me. So in some ways, very similar to my portrait of Nala because it is using natural light. And we actually looked at this photo last week, but I wanna show you how the different sliders can affect skin tones. So in this situation, if I bring the shadows down, it is mostly going to affect just these areas sort of down here on me. It's gonna affect a bit of the background, a little bit of my face where there's some shadow, but not that much, right? If I bring the shadows up, similarly, it's not affecting much of me. So it's not as helpful as you might think. Whereas if I go to the black slider, it's gonna bring that, that black point down, right? So we're gonna crush the blacks. And you'll see this makes a massive difference. Look at that. So for me, this really illustrates kind of the power of the whites and black slider versus the highlights and shadows in terms of how careful you kind of need to be. It's a, it's a much more gentle approach that you wanna be taking with those sliders. I might bring the black point down a little bit something like that to create some mood. I could then bring the white point up a little bit. It's gonna create contrast. It's gonna make for an interesting image. And then it would be tempting to play around with the highlights and shadows. But I think in this situation, I probably don't really need to. I think I've done enough to create a little bit of contrast, a little bit of interest with the whites and the black slider there without going too crazy. Now, of course, I could just use the contrast slider up here to increase contrast, but I've got a little bit more nuance to it, right? A little bit more that I can work with by using the whites and black slider and moving that white point and black point. Now, I hope that's been helpful. We're probably gonna step away from Lightroom a little bit over the next couple of weeks because we really have gone hard in on a lot of Lightroom stuff. But tell you, tell you what, if you, if you love these Lightroom tutorials, let me know in the comments. I've gotta be honest, I love making them. I love the photo editing tutorials. So let me know in the comments if that's something you wanna see more of, if there's anything else you'd like to see in Lightroom. We've already had some great suggestions, so that's fantastic, but keep them coming because I love making the stuff you guys actually wanna see. There's nothing that's too silly, right? It's all good. 
It's super useful. I learn stuff, you guys learn stuff. It's just a great time. I really enjoy it. You can see a full list of all the kit we use for these photos in this video and all this kind of stuff down in the description. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe because there's new stuff every week. I will see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.